welcome students welcome to the class of physical pharmaceutics in chapter solubility of drugs today we are going to discuss a bit types of solvent broadly there are three types of solvents which are used in solubility mechanism first is polar solvent second is non polar solvent and third is semi polar solvents so one by one we will discuss these kinds of solvents first we will discuss polar solvents so what is mean by polar solvent polar solvents have a large dipole moment they contain bonds between atoms with very different electronegativity such as oxygen and hydrogen for example water and glycerin so if we see in water water is having hydrogen and oxygen which is having very different electronegativities means oxygen is having very strong negative charge and hydrogen is having very strong positive charge so such kind of difference electronegativities is required if then and then only it will be a good polar solvent and the capacity of polar solvent to dissolve something is depends upon its dipole moment dipole moment is nothing but the charges on that atoms in that particular structure right then talking specific about polar solvents polar solvent dissolve polar solute more readily because the polar solutes like nacl which polar solutes means the solutes which dissociate to form ions because nacl will form na plus and cl minus ion when added to water so polar solutes more readily dissolve in polar solvents but while talking about the polar solvents there are three types of mechanism by which these polar solvents make solubility happen so what are these mechanisms by which these polar solvents intend to make uh, solute solubilize so one by one we will discuss these mechanism first is the solub these polar solvents are having high dielectric constant due to the as they are having high dielectric constants they reduce the attraction between opposite charge ions and as the attraction between opposite charge ions is decreased there will be solubilization but first we will discuss what is actually a dielectric constant we are we are saying here that polar solvents are having high dielectric constant that's why they are solubilizing the polar solutes but what is actually a dielectric constant we will understand this with animation first we'll discuss definition the dielectric constant is relative permittivity of electric flux uh, literal meaning of this sentence is it is just allowing the electrical current throughout if they are permitting if the solvent is having high dielectric constant it will allow the current to pass through it so how it uh, works actually suppose we are adding Uh, sodium chloride to water so sodium chloride will dissociate and it will form sodium na plus and cl minus ions whenever there are plus and minus ions in a particular solution there are chances of flow of electric current very easily that is nothing but dielectric constants but if there will be no, no such ions there will be no electric current pass and there will be uh, no permittivity of electric flux so if dielectric constant will be high there will be more ions and there will be more transfer of electric current so how it helps in this solubility phenomena we will discuss that na plus and cl minus ions once formed they are having positive and negative charge and they have tendency to attract with each other with each other so they try to come together the nacl na plus and cl minus ion try to come together if once we add it in water and it will come together again they will again form nacl and we don't get any solubilized form of salt or nacl so what happens when we add water to it water is a polar solvent we have already discussed it is having large dipole moments or large uh, difference in electronegativities so what happens the oxygen which is electronegative negative charge it pushes uh, this chlorine and hydrogen pushes this na plus Uh, ions so they makes a barrier between this na plus and cl minus ion so due to making the barriers the na plus and cl minus ions remain as ions 
and as they remain as ions it is nothing but a solubility phenomenon so by having a dielectric constant high dielectric constant that is that is nothing but reducing the attraction between the opposite charges how they are making due to in using the dipoles that is charge of electronegativities they are maintaining distance between these ions and that's why the solubility happens so high dielectric constants is just a phenomena which maintains this ions a opposite charge uh, by at, uh, or opposes or reduces the attraction between this opposite charge ions or repels this opposite charge ions so that they remain in ionized form and we get the soluble solution so in this way the water helps this na plus and cl minus ion to uh, remain in uh, opposite direction or they reduce the attraction between the na and uh, na plus and cl minus ion that, that's why there will be ionized form of na plus and cl minus in solubilized form next thing we are going to discuss is dielectric constant values as we are defining dielectric constant there are some values of dielectric constants Uh, for example water water is having 80 value of dielectric constants it is the highest value of dielectric constant among the polar solvents so what happens this water is ha having high dielectric constant that's why it dissolves polar solutes which solutes it dissolves inorganic salt organic salt likewise so uh, the phenomena we have already discussed here suppose we take example from here that the solvent with a low dielectric constant for example five dielectric constant which are the examples hexane benzene for example we take benzene and we add inorganic salt for example nacl we add nacl to benzene what will happen if nacl uh, is added to benzene there will not be uh, solubility or the salt will not get dissolved in benzene because there will not be high dielectric constant it is having very uh, low dielectric constant that is 5 so this phenomena we have discussed that it will not reduce the attraction between the opposite charge ions so that the na plus and cl minus ions come together and again the salt will form which is not in a ionized form so it will be not solubilized so when we add polar solutes like nacl to the uh, solvents with low uh, dielectric constant like 5 of benzene it will not get dissolved it needs a solvent like water which is having high dielectric constant it will readily dissolve so next we will discuss the second mechanism we have discussed first second mechanism for polar solvents by which it get solubilized second is breaking of covalent bond if we add hydrochloric acid for example hcl uh, to water uh, if you uh, try to break the bond of hydrochloric acid it is difficult because it is a covalent bond but when you add it to water it will readily dissociate to h plus and cl minus n due to electronegativities of this polar solvent as we have discussed earlier the water is a polar solvent it is having uh, o minus and h plus electronegativities and high uh, dipole moments that's why it dissociates or it breaks the covalent bonds of hydrochloric acid and dissociating h plus and cl minus so this is second mechanism by which polar solvent act and third uh, mechanism by which solar solvent act is a forming a hydrogen bonds so hydrogen bonds are formed with of water are formed with uh, alcohols aldehydes ketones or amines with any of this category water can form hydrogen bonds and if hydrogen bonds are formed the water will able or the polar solvent will able to form a solution we have also already discussed in earlier lecture the example of sucrose when sucrose is added to water it get dissolved due to formation of hydrogen bonds wherever uh, there are oh bond present on the sucrose molecule with that the water interacts the oxygen atom interacts and forms a hydrogen bonds almost the uh, sucrose molecule is covered from all the side with the water molecule and solubilization occurs or solution forms so forming hydrogen bonds is a third type of mechanism by which polar solvents acts and form a solution so we have discussed polar what is polar solvent how it acts and what are the three mechanism by which polar solvent acts next we are discussing non polar solvents non polar solvent 
dissolve solute through weak van der Waals forces or induced dipole forces. So non-polar solvent will not utilize any of mechanism of polar solvents like hydrogen bonds or uh, high uh, dielectric constants. Instead, they will be acting using the forces like weak van der Waals forces or induced dipole forces. The examples of non-polar solvents are benzene, toluene, carbon, uh, tetrachloride, likewise. And they dissolve non-polar solutes like oils and fats. Uh, example, castor oil, oil or polyethylene glycol. So non-polar solv solvents tend to dissolve non-polar solutes. Now, third category is semi-polar solvents. So semi-polar solvents act as intermediate solvents. So they themselves not act as a solvent, but they help as intermediate solvents for polar and non-polar solvents. If we add some semi-polar solvent to non-polar solvent, then the solubility of this non-polar solvent will increase. So they can induce certain degree of polarity to non-polar solvents. We have seen that non-polar solvent is having very less dipole or induced dipole or weak forces of Van der Waals. So if we want to increase the solubility of non-polar solvents like benzene, so for example, if we add alcohol, alcohol is a semi-polar solvent, we add alcohol to benzene, then it increases its solubility for polar solvents. So we can uh, use semi-polar solvent as an intermediate solvent to improve the solubility of uh, or solubility parameter of non-polar solvents. So it is a third category of uh, solvents. By looking at this all three categories of types of solvents, we can say that we have seen that polar solvent tend to dissolve in dissolve polar solutes. Here we can say the non-polar solvents dissolves non-polar solutes. So polar solutes dissolve polar solvent in polar solvents and non-polar solute dissolves in non-polar solvents. This phenomenon came to uh, evolution of a phrase called as like dissolves like. So it might be asked that explain the terminology like dissolves like in solubility phenomena. So then we have to discuss this all types of solvents and how they act and which kind of solute is soluble in which kind of solvent. Then we can explain this like dissolves like uh, phrase. Okay. In next lecture, we will discuss standard solubility parameter. Thank you.